I am Bella, the organist at St. Mary's Church. It is a beautiful old building with towering stained glass windows and a magnificent organ that has been there for over a century. The organ is known for its rich, resonant sound, and it is often played during church services and concerts. One day, I was practicing in the church when I heard a strange noise coming from the organ. It was a low, rumbling sound, like something was moving inside the instrument. I stopped playing and listened carefully. The noise continued. I got up and walked over to the organ. I peered inside, but I couldn't see anything. The organ was dark and dusty, and it was difficult to see anything in the dim light. I reached out and touched one of the keys. The organ played a single note, but it was distorted and out of tune. I tried another key, and the same thing happened. The organ was clearly out of order. I decided to stop practicing and go home. I would call a repairman the next day. As I was leaving the church, I heard the organ start to play on its own. It was a slow, mournful melody, and it filled the church with a sense of sadness. I stopped in my tracks and listened. The music was beautiful, but it was also haunting. I felt a chill run down my spine. The music stopped as suddenly as it had started. I didn't know what to think. I decided to go home and get some rest. The next day, I called a repairman to come and fix the organ. The repairman, an old man named George, arrived at the church a few hours later. What seems to be the problem? George asked me. The organ is playing out of tune, I said, and it keeps playing on its own. George nodded. I see, he said. Well, let's take a look. George opened up the organ and started to examine it. He looked at the pipes and the wires, but he couldn't find anything wrong. I don't see anything wrong with it, George said. It's all in good working order. But how can that be? I asked. The organ is playing out of tune, and it's playing on its own. George shrugged. I don't know, he said. Maybe it's just a glitch. Maybe it needs to be tuned. George tuned the organ and then left the church. I was still confused, but I decided to give the organ a try. I sat down at the bench and started to play. At first, the organ played perfectly. But then, suddenly, it started to play out of tune again. I stopped playing. The organ continued to play on its own, but the music was different this time. It was a fast, frenzied melody, and it filled the church with a sense of terror. I ran out of the church and into the street. I didn't look back. I didn't go back to the church for several days. I was too scared. But then, I decided that I had to face my fears. I had to go back to the church and confront the haunted organ. I walked into the church and slowly walked over to the organ. I took a deep breath and sat down at the bench. I placed my hands on the keys and started to play. At first, the organ played perfectly, but then, suddenly, it started to play out of tune again. I didn't stop playing. 
I knew that I had to keep playing. I had to confront the haunted organ. The music became faster and faster, and it became more and more frenzied. I felt a dark presence inside the organ. It was trying to control me. I struggled against the dark presence, but it was too strong. I felt myself losing control. Suddenly, I felt a surge of power. I pushed back against the dark presence, and I took control of the organ. The music slowed down and became more melodic. It was still dark and haunting, but it was no longer frenzied. I played the organ for hours. I played until I felt exhausted, but I also felt cleansed. I had defeated the dark presence inside the organ. The next day, I went back to the church. I sat down at the organ and started to play. The organ played perfectly. The dark presence was gone. Next story. The abandoned church stood on the outskirts of town a decaying relic of a bygone era. Its stained glass windows were boarded up, its paint peeling, its steeple leaning precariously to one side. Locals avoided the place, whispering tales of hauntings and evil spirits. One night, a young woman named Joyce was driving home from a late shift at work when her car broke down. She was stranded in the middle of nowhere with no cell phone service. She decided to walk to the nearest town. But as she got closer, she realized that she was passing by the abandoned church. Joyce hesitated for a moment, but she was cold and tired, and she didn't want to spend the night in her car she decided to take a shortcut through the church grounds. The church was even more eerie up close. Joyce could hear the wind whistling through the cracks in the boarded-up windows, and the trees cast eerie shadows on the walls. She hurried across the grounds, her footsteps echoing in the silence. As she reached the back door of the church, Joyce heard a noise. She froze, her heart pounding in her chest. She listened carefully, but the noise didn't come again. Joyce took a deep breath and opened the door. The church was dark and dusty, with only a few shafts of moonlight filtering through the boarded-up windows. Joyce could feel a chill run down her spine. She took a few steps inside, her eyes adjusting to the darkness. She could see the pews lined up neatly in the center of the church and the altar at the front. Joyce's heart started to race again. She heard a noise behind her. She turned around but she couldn't see anything in the darkness. Hello, she called out. Is anyone there? There was no answer. Joyce took a deep breath and continued walking. She had to get out of there. She was halfway down the aisle when she saw something out of the corner of her eye. She turned and saw a figure standing in the shadows. The figure was tall and thin, with long, dark hair. It was wearing a black cloak. Joyce's heart started to pound in her chest. She took a step backwards. Who are you? she asked. The figure didn't answer. It just stood there, staring at her. Joyce turned and ran. She didn't look back. 
She ran out of the church and into the night. She didn't stop running until she reached the town. Joyce told the police what had happened, but they couldn't find anything at the church. They told her that it was probably just her imagination. But Joyce knew what she had seen. She had seen the figure in the shadows. The next day, Joyce went back to the church with a group of her friends. They searched the church from top to bottom, but they couldn't find anything. Joyce was starting to think that she had imagined the whole thing. But then, one of her friends found something. He pulled back a loose floorboard in the basement, and they found a hidden compartment underneath. Inside the compartment was a skeleton. Joyce and her friends were horrified. They called the police, and the police confirmed that the skeleton was the remains of a missing person. The police investigated the church, but they couldn't find any other evidence of foul play. They concluded that the murder had taken place many years ago and that the killer had probably been long dead. But Joyce wasn't so sure. She had seen the figure in the shadows. She knew that the church was evil. Joyce and her friends decided to stay away from the church. But they couldn't stop thinking about it. They knew that there was something dark and evil lurking within its walls. One night, Joyce decided to go back to the church on her own. She wanted to confront the evil that she had sensed there. She arrived at the church late at night. The moon was full, and its light cast eerie shadows on the church grounds. Joyce took a deep breath and walked up to the front door. She opened the door and stepped inside. The church was dark and silent. Joyce could hear her own footsteps echoing in the emptiness. She walked slowly down the aisle, her eyes adjusting to the darkness. She could see the pews lined up neatly on either side of her and the altar at the front. Joyce stopped in the middle of the aisle. She could feel the evil presence all around her. She knew that the figure in the shadows was watching her. Next story. The church is a towering white structure that cast a long shadow over the surrounding landscape. It was a beautiful building with stained glass windows and a soaring steeple. But the locals whispered tales about the church. They said that it was built on a sacred Native American burial ground and that the spirits of the dead were not happy about it. One day, a young woman named Kelly decided to visit the church. She had heard the stories, but she didn't believe them. She thought it was just a silly superstition. Kelly arrived at the church late in the afternoon. The sun was setting, and the church was cast in a golden glow. It was even more that she had imagined. Kelly walked up the steps to the front door and opened it. The church was dark and cool inside. Kelly could hear the sound of her own footsteps echoing on the stone floor. She walked down the aisle, her eyes adjusting to the darkness. She could see the pews lined up neatly on either side of her and the altar at the front. 
Kelly stopped in the middle of the aisle. She felt a strange sensation. It was as if she was being watched. She looked around, but she couldn't see anything. She was the only one in the church. Kelly shrugged it off and continued walking. She reached the altar and stopped. She took a deep breath and looked up at the stained glass window behind it. The window depicted a scene from the Bible. Jesus was standing on a mountain, surrounded by his disciples. He was holding a lamb in his arms. Kelly stared at the window for a long time. She felt a sense of peace and serenity. After a while, Kelly turned to leave. She walked back down the aisle, her footsteps echoing in the silence. When she reached the front door, she stopped. She felt the strange sensation again. It was as if she was being watched. Kelly turned around, but she still couldn't see anything. She was the only one in the church. Kelly shrugged it off and opened the door. She stepped outside and took a deep breath of fresh air. The sun had set, and the sky was dark. The only light came from the moon and stars. Kelly turned to walk away from the church, but then she heard a noise. She stopped and listened. The noise came from behind the church. It was a low, moaning sound. Kelly's heart started to race. She took a step backward. She didn't want to go back to the church, but she couldn't just leave. She had to find out what was making the noise. Kelly took a deep breath and walked around the back of the church. She stopped when she saw what was making the noise. It was a figure standing in the shadows. The figure was tall and thin, with long, dark hair. It was wearing a white robe. Kelly's heart started to pound in her chest. She knew that the figure was one of the spirits of the dead. The figure turned to face Kelly. It had pale skin and sunken eyes. You are not welcome here, the spirit said. Kelly took a step backwards. I'm sorry she said. I didn't mean to disturb you. You have disturbed us, the spirit said. You have built your church on our sacred ground. I didn't build the church, Kelly said. I just came for a visit. The spirit didn't answer. It just stared at Kelly with its sunken eyes. Kelly turned and ran. She didn't look back. She ran until she reached the town. She didn't stop running until she was safely inside her own home. Kelly locked the door and went to bed. But she couldn't sleep. She kept thinking about the spirit. She knew that it was still out there, somewhere. The next day... Kelly told her friends what had happened. They didn't believe her at first, but then they saw the fear in her eyes, and they knew that she was telling the truth. Kelly and her friends decided to stay away from the church, but they couldn't stop thinking about it. They knew that the spirits of the dead were still out there, and that they were not happy. One night, Kelly and her friends decided to go back to the church. They wanted to confront the spirits and tell them to leave. They arrived at the church late at night. The moon was full, and its light cast eerie shadows on the church grounds. 
Kelly and her friends walked up the steps to the front door and opened it. The church was dark and silent inside. Kelly and her friends walked down the aisle, their eyes adjusting to the darkness. They could see the pews lined up neatly on either side of them, and the altar at the front. Kelly stopped in the middle of the aisle. She could feel the presence of the spirits all around her. She knew that they were watching her. We're here to talk to you, Kelly said. Her voice echoed in the silence. There was no answer. Kelly took a deep breath. We know that you're not happy about the church being built on your sacred ground, she said but we're asking you to please leave the church in peace. Still no answer. Kelly started to feel scared. She looked at her friends, but they were just as scared as she was. We're not here to hurt you, Kelly said. We just want to live in peace. One of the spirits stepped out of the shadows. It was the same figure that Kelly had seen before. You are not welcome here, the spirit said. You have built your church on our sacred ground. We didn't build the church, Kelly said. We're just trying to live in peace. You cannot live in peace here, the spirit said. This is our land. The spirit raised its hand and a blast of energy shot out at Kelly. Kelly dodged the blast, but her friends weren't so lucky. The blast hit them full in the chest, and they were knocked to the ground. Kelly screamed. She didn't know what to do. The other spirits stepped out of the shadows. They were all tall and thin, with pale skin and sunken eyes. Kelly turned and ran. She ran as fast as she could. She could hear the spirits chasing behind her. She could hear them laughing. Kelly ran out of the church and into the night. She didn't stop running until she reached the town. She didn't look back. Kelly told the police what had happened, but they didn't believe her. They told her that she was probably just imagining things. But Kelly knew what she had seen. She knew that the spirits of the dead were real. Kelly and her friends never went back to the church. But they knew that the spirits were still out there, somewhere. And they knew that they were not happy. One day, Kelly was walking home from work when she saw a group of people gathered around the church. She stopped to see what was going on. She saw that the church was on fire. The flames were shooting high into the night sky. As a huge support, please hit like, subscribe, and maybe share your thought or any experience before going to watch another video. Thank you so much. Have a good day.